Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Man Cave. Don't have a big program for you this morning, but uh, I do have a new song I'm going to debut. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm on the fence on it, I'll be honest. <laughs> you know, and I don't think I'm being critical. I, I'm just on the fence. So I just, I'll wait and see what your comments are and what you think. Um, it's, uh, I'm going to call it, uh, well, right now I'm calling it Murphy's Law. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> uh, now keep in mind, there would be some uh, musical interludes in here. I'm just going to sing it straight through for you without any instrumental. Old man Murphy, he's got nothing on me. When it comes to screwing up, well, I wrote that book, you see. And in chapter one's where you show me. That old man Murphy, he ain't got a thing on me. And they say if it can happen, just wait until. I'm the poster child for that line. I guess I always will. So I wait till the hammer drops and then I see. That old man Murphy, he ain't got a thing on me. People try to tell me I'm all wrong. These things happen to everybody all day long. But from the inside looking out, all I can see Is that old man Murphy, he ain't got a thing on me Old man Murphy, he's got nothing on me When it comes to screwing up, well I wrote that book you see And it was in chapter one where you showed me that old man Murphy, well heck, he don't even know what bad luck is. He ain't got a thing on me. Well, as dumb as it is, there it is. <laughs> I didn't say it was a happy song. <laughs> it's kind of depressing. Uh, oh well, got it over with. <laughs> Like I said, I've written hundreds of them, and most of them are just on the shelf. <laughs> that's probably one that's where that one will probably end up also. Um, anyway, um, I uh, was looking at the auction this morning. The Taylor Classical is still at seven fifty. The Martin is at twelve hundred. Um, the Rosa Mandolins at thirty two fifty. People are trying are sending in like different bids and things and. To me on email and i'd really prefer if you just stick to the auction um it's just it's just the way to do it i think i i hate to take things behind the scenes now if you're going to make an offer that you know is higher than the buy it now price well then yeah send me an email <laughs> but it, but otherwise if you know if it falls within the boundaries of the buy it now price and that's as far as you're willing to go, well, then just go there, you know, uh, during the auction. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it, uh, you know, and I, I realize the buy it now prices are, are fairly high, you know, because if you set them too low, well, then you've made a mistake, you know, the auction could have went higher than your buy it now price. So there it is. I don't know how else to do it. I, I'm trying to be fair to everybody and fair to Cecilia, especially. And kind of is what it is. Uh, yesterday, I, like I said, I don't have a big program for you this morning. Yesterday, I changed the computers around. That's pretty much all I did. I tried to take a nap. Could not take a nap for nothing. Didn't maybe slept a total of 30 minutes the whole day in multiple tries to take a nap. I was beat to death. I got about seven hours last night. That helps. Um... So today, for sure, well, if the weather holds up, and I think it will, but I'm not positive, 
But if the weather holds up, I'm going to go out there and work on those Martin houses today. Because I meant to do it yesterday, but I just was beat down. So what I did instead was I swapped the computers around. So I did get this computer swapped around, and uh, I'm pretty happy with that. I, I, I think I'm going to start doing all my video editing from right here. It's just more convenient rather than having to go down to the shop to do the video editing and all that. Um, so I think I'm going to do it all from here now that I've got the, the new uh, computer and the new monitor and everything up here. In fact, here's what it looks like. I'll just give you a quick glance at uh, my setup right here. It's not the best setup because it's I'm cramped for space. So you can see there that the screen, you know, is pretty wide. It's a pretty wide screen. And that, that little uh, deal sitting on in front of the screen there, that's the audio interface. That's where you plug in all the microphones and things. And the computer is down below. You couldn't see the computer. But anyway, it kind of is what it is. Um, after I got the computers moved around, well, then I mostly just spent time freeing up space and fixing little bugs and problems and network issues and things just I fixed a lot of stuff so I mostly I mostly just messed with the computers all day didn't really get anything productive done other well it was productive for me but not for anybody else um and I think that's everything I was going to tell you so uh, let's go to the comments John Pepper was number one again and Rod Wintler was right up there Eddie Turner and Bill Webb Carolyn Fike. Let's move down and look for question marks. I see some there. C90 guy. Hi, Jerry. Do you know the guys from Mazingo Music on YouTube? They have videos of you from 12 years ago. Well, I used to know Mr. Mazingo. Uh, he had a music store in Ellisville where I, I lived in Baldwin, which is right next door. And uh, he knew me then. I knew him. Um, it's changed hands, I think. I'm not really sure if if it's his son that owns it now or, or what the deal is, but I don't know them presently. Um, but yeah, uh, years ago, they uh, asked me to come in and teach a deal on uh, the Nashville number system. So I came in and did that. Uh, that, that was actually at their store. They, they had a second store open up out in um, like, I don't know. I can't think of the right name of the town. <sighs> Winsville, O'Fallon. It was out in, kind of close to O'Fallon, I think, actually is where it was. So anyway, uh, anyway, they had a music store. I think it's O'Fallon, Missouri, and that's where that one was. And uh, it went over pretty well. Um, you know, kind of is what it is, one of them things. I haven't watched it in years. I think I watched it after they put it out right at that time 12 years ago but i haven't seen it since then so i'll probably be embarrassed if i watch it now <laughs> daddy hildebrand uh good morning everyone hope you have a blessed day yeah and you too daddy let's see moving on down um i'm hoping i don't miss people's question marks but i'm looking for them uh, Dotty says, how about a chirp? Well, you just heard one. I don't know how good it was, but you heard one <laughs> with a brand new song on top of it. Uh, and let's see, moving on down. After we went live, Bruce Hines and Walt Willard were the first ones to ring in. And then there's Bill Rhodes with a good morning and Glenn Woods, fortune favors the brave. <laughs> <laughs> you you'd be surprised how nerve-wracking it is to do something like that to do a new song it's uh you know you're laying it out there and it's it's just it's what is there but critique you know i mean that's all you're you're just opening yourself up for critique i mean it's some of it can be good but some of it can really be you know bad too so anyway you just do it and you just see what happens And they say that Murphy was an optimist. <laughs> uh, that's funny. David Tharp said that. Um, Bruce Ducker. Good one, Jerry. Okay, well, thanks. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Daddy says, that's a pretty good song. Well, I don't know if it is or it isn't. I, it's not quite what I was expecting it to be when I started it. I really thought I'd have... It's hard to get 
rhymes into stuff like that and worked in and, you know, where it makes sense, you know, I mean, you can force anything and it's just, it sounds like it's forced, you know, and I was trying to make it where it didn't sound too forced, but I don't know. It just is what it is. Carolyn Fike says, I like it. It's kind of clever. Well, thanks. Um, Matt Tom and Heil uh, from snowy Denver. Yeah, I heard you're supposed to get a major snowstorm. Cause they were saying feet of snow. So um, I don't usually watch the weather, but I was watching uh, one of the news programs and that, that popped up and I heard them say that. So, But I don't really care about the weather. I really don't. <clears throat> I might if I lived in Denver. <laughs> I mean, you're getting dumped on with feet of snow. I, I might pay attention to it then. Ronald Todd, I think everyone can relate to your song. I give it a thumbs up. Okay, well, good. Yeah, it's one of them deals where, I again, I it's just, I wanted more out of it. I thought I could get more out of it, but it just didn't, tur didn't turn out that way. Tom Broom, obviously you worked for Ma Bell, but what is the significance of the Ma Bell logo on the wall behind you? Well, that is a painting I did. I've shown it before, I think. <clears throat> Try to get where the light don't reflect on it so much, and maybe... <laughs> <laughs> Darn microphones. Um, anyway, uh, we were supposed, it was in a college night school class, you know. I told you I went to night school for 18 years. I took a lot of psychology classes, and I believe this was in one of the psychology classes. And you were supposed to make a collage by cutting things out of a magazine. And I'm not into cutting stuff out of a magazine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, that's like school kid stuff to me. So I said, uh, I said, would you care if I just make a painting instead of a collage, you know, instead of a, a, a painting collage? I said, could I just paint a collage instead of cutting things out of a magazine? Plus, we were out in the country. We didn't get a lot of magazines and, and uh, newspapers anyway. I mean, I did get a lot of magazines, actually. I got, most of them were outdoors. And I think I had a, a magazine called Geo, which was a really cool magazine back then. It's something a little bit akin to National Geographic, but it was much more picturesque. A really neat magazine, by the way, but it's out of print now. But anyway, uh, so this is what it ended up being. And, you know, it, you were supposed to put in there the things that represent your life and, uh, you know, uh, and you're supposed to explain the collage. Well, the way I more or less explained it is I, the house up here represents my family by the way, that's the house that I told you was sitting on the hillside that I built a basement underneath, and you can see the basement underneath it there. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, that represented my family. So to me, it was at the top. It was the most important. But everything for me, because, you know, working for Bell was a full-time thing, and uh, everything circled around working for Bell. You know what I'm saying? I had to balance everything. And so I'm explaining it like this, because you're supposed to, you know, explain it where it makes sense to people. So, and then as a child, one of the biggest things for me was fishing. So you can see the fish is pretty big there. And, but that was really big deal for me. Um, you know, because I would, that was a way I could get away. <laughs> you know, I could go fishing and my, you know, my dad wasn't making me work basically is what it amounted to. And then you can see the archery thing here. And I, again, I was the Missouri State champion there when I was like 16. And then my uncle, uh, this kind of represents my uncle Don Brown and the bluegrass music and the importance to me. And then of course the horses is my dad. And, and then the, um, the, um, uh, deer there is that I, I love to hunt just like I like, love to fish. And then this quarter, the little tiny quarter there that you can see is my, uh, grandpa. Uh, I, I sang his song yesterday, grandpa's old fiddle. And uh, every time I went and saw him, every single time when I was a kid, he gave me a quarter. And so that's pretty cool. <clears throat> so that's the significance of the bell. It, 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 in a way, it 
wasn't all that significant to be so large. It's just that everything had to revolve around that because that was the thing that put everything else together, if you will. So I'm very grateful that I worked for Bell. Um, I've told this story before, but I'm sure there's plenty of people that haven't heard it. I, and I know it's going to sound stupid. Some of the things that have happened to me in my life, they just don't make sense. Like they couldn't have happened, but they did. And this is one of those. You know, I got my job working for Southwestern Bell when I was in the fourth grade. And I know that sounds stupid, but it's the truth. I, I did. Um, I, I was cutting grass. Uh, my dad had a lawn service and he would take me and drop me off by myself with a tractor and a push mower. Because back then they didn't have string trimmers. It was, you used a push mower for the trimming and you used a tractor to cut the, the main yard. And then you would take a broom and you'd sweep off the sidewalks. They didn't have blowers and all that stuff back then either, or at least none that we saw or knew about. Anyway, so uh, he drops me off at Ray Shockley's yard. Now, Ray Shockley was the executive vice president of Southwestern Bell for Missouri. He, at that time, they had a, each state had a president. I don't think they do that anymore. I don't know how they, how they have it worked out anymore. But anyway, he was the executive vice president of Southwestern Bell for Missouri. So anyway, my, uh, you know, I, I cut his yard. I never saw the man. I didn't know him from Adam. And... Um, I cut his yard, trimmed it, you know, swept it, cleaned it up as good as I could, you know, and it was a big estate like. <laughs> I mean, it was really a nice place. And, you know, back in the 60s, you know, the, the, these lawns were way bigger. And, and in that particular area, town and country in Ladue, uh, Missouri, those are pretty plush even to today's standards. They're pretty nice places. It was the old rich, old rich, if you will. So you can imagine it was a big estate and it was a big lawn I don't know two or three acres I'm sure well anyway when my dad came to pick me up that evening around five o'clock whatever it was Ray came outside talked to my dad I didn't know about the conversation I don't even remember seeing him come outside but my dad told me this later um, he said Ray came out and asked him if I wanted a job working for Southwestern Bell when I got out of high school and I said and my dad said, well, sure, yeah, that'd be great, wonderful, you know, that kind of thing. And Ray Shockley was a really, really nice man anyway. And he also had an absolute, and when you say this, it sounds cliche, but I swear to you, this man had an absolute photographic memory. I've never seen anything like his memory. Um, so I never did ever meet the guy, um, well, until way later, um, but anyway, I, so I got my job when I got out of high school. In fact, two weeks before I graduated, um, he calls me on the phone, Ray Shockley. He says, hi, you don't know me, but my name's Ray Shockley. And, you know, I want to offer you a job working for Southwestern Bell. And this was two weeks before I graduated. Well, I had already agreed to be a conservation agent for the state of Missouri. And I pretty much had an in into that. And, I, I, and, you know, because I was into the outdoors and everything, that was really where I wanted to go. Well, when he offered this, I went, uh, well, <laughs> uh, let me talk to my dad, you know? So I, I didn't want to say no, but on the other hand, I didn't really want to say yes, because I wanted to be a conservation agent, you know? And so when I told my dad about it, he says, absolutely, take that job. <laughs> and I said, okay, so I did. And quite honestly, I, I kind of regretted it, to be honest with you. I, it wasn't. I wasn't cut out for that. I, I went in as a service rep, I, and I did as good as I could do. But I just, you know, back then it was way different than it is now. You, you had to be so syrupy polite and so syrupy sweet to everybody you talked to. And um, it was really difficult. But, uh, and they were on top of you all the time. Well, years later, after I got that job and after I got a, another job or two, I met Ray Shockley walking on the sidewalk, and I knew who he was because you kind of know who your president is, you know. And I, I just said, hi, Ray Shockley. I said, I just want to tell you, thank you. My name's Jerry Rosen. I want to thank you for you. And he knew everything. He, I mean, like he knew the details, the most minute details of things that you would never, ever believe. I mean, he starts asking me questions about my mom's surgery. Now, 
how would he even know about it? Do you know what I mean? He's he's asking details. Like, now they were going to take that bile duct out of so-and-so, and they were moving it over here and doing that, and how did that all turn out? And I'm, I'm floored that he knows all this. I mean, this man was, whew, I've never seen anything like it. And so, uh, anyway, he was a pretty cool guy. But that's how I got my job, working for Southwestern Bell. Never even applied. And uh, I also have told the story already that that's the only... See, when they, they had their own doctor. And so when you go in for the... They'd give you an exam, you know. And that's the only colorblind test I ever passed in my life. <laughs> and all he did was he handed me this cable and he says, match up uh, th uh, three pairs of wires that are the same color. So I just picked out the three that I could see. You know, I mean, you can kind of tell, even when you're colorblind, you can kind of tell, do these things match or they don't match? You know, you can kind of tell that. You maybe don't know what color they are. <laughs> so anyway, I picked out three that match. He goes, okay, you passed <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only way I've ever passed a color test. I thought that was pretty funny, too. Anyway, moving on down. Um, <laughs> I've lost where I was now, by the way. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm, I'm looking for the one about the asking about that, because I figured that's about where I left off, and I don't see it. Okay, it's down here, but I think I missed, must have missed one or two. I think I did. Um, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm reading them just to make sure I didn't miss somebody's. Okay, I guess I'm okay. Um, <clears throat> looks like Rod Wintler was the next one. Maybe it's just me, but... Your picture looks much better today. Lighting swapped computer. Yeah, I think it's this computer. Um, it's got a much higher uh, throughput, a higher resolution, all that. And that's another reason why I wanted to bring it up here. Because I, I, it's just a way more powerful computer. The other one's pretty powerful. It's not a, nothing to sneeze at. But this one's way more powerful. Um, I bought this computer as just bare bones because I couldn't have afforded it if it was the whole package. I could barely afford it the way it was. Um, I think I paid just under $2,000, and all I really got was a box with a, uh, with a you know, terrific motherboard, uh, you know, a processor, and memory. And I didn't even have a video card, so I had to buy a video card on top of that. And, you know, video cards can cost more than the computers. So, anyway, I bought a pretty good video card, not the very best. And uh, so I've got quite a bit of money wrapped up in this thing. But, but, the, but the, the guts of it are pretty powerful. They'll last a long, long time, assuming they last a long, long time. <laughs> I mean, they'll be powerful enough to power anything coming up for a, quite a long time. Uh, let's see. Moving on down. Let's see. Uh, Bruce Ducker, you can tell the difference in the computer video quality is much improved. Yeah, well, good. I'm glad it is because, uh, yeah, I, I could see it on my screen, too, that it wasn't what I was hoping for. Um, yeah, that, that old computer is pretty old, actually. Uh, it, it's still fairly powerful, powerful enough to basically do live because live takes a lot of power um, but not quite powerful enough to do quality live if you will um okay moving on down cup of cool you look mighty <laughs> comfy in that man cave i wouldn't blame you for doing as much as you can from right there. Yeah, it's just, it, well, it'll just be a lot easier too. Plus, you know, like in the wintertime, I have to go down and warm that up where that's just wasting energy for the most part because this is already going to be warm, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, on a rainy day or whatever, it's kind of a pain to go down there too. You know, just things like that. It just makes it, it just makes more sense to, to do it here. In fact, because I'm doing so little in the office now, I think I'm going to, there's one computer. There's one program on the office computer that I need to put in up here, and it's my accounting program. And once I get that up here, well, then I really don't need to go down there except to work. You know, when I want to work, and uh, that's would be much better. That way, I can keep up with the accounting and uh, all the book work and stuff too, because there's quite a bit. You'd be surprised, and it's way behind right now again. <laughs> 
Um, moving around or moving on down. Let's see. Um, Peter Laubeck, what are you doing with the saw dust from the board cutting? Uh, there must be buckets of it. Why not put it in newspaper and burn it in your uh, wood destroyer heating system? Yeah, well, you can sort of kind of do that, but um, uh, we throw it on the compost pile or throw it on the garden or just things like that. She, If there's enough of it, uh, like the, and my dust collector uh, in the shop, you know, there gets to be quite a bit of sawdust in that, and she throws it in the horse stalls and different things. There's plenty of uses for it. We don't have any problem getting rid of it. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> uh, moving on down. Yeah, Bill Webb says that John Prine just makes up a word. Yeah, and I have done that a time or two myself. Um, yeah, I, you know, for some reason, though, I, I know John Prine is hugely popular, but he just doesn't ring with me for some reason. I don't know. I I don't know. It probably makes everybody mad when I say that because he's hugely popular, but he just doesn't do it for me. I, he's just not my style or what I like to hear, you know. And, and I'm just being truthful. Not that I need to be. I probably should just keep that to myself. But that's just the way it is. I'm just not a big fan. Bill Rhodes, play that song about Grandpa's funeral was very nice. Play that song about Grandpa's funeral was very nice. Um, you're talking about Grandpa's old fiddle? If you want me to play it, I can do that, I guess. Yeah, uh, Grandpa's old fiddle has been my most requested song since I wrote it. Um, I mean, when we were playing out, I should say. Uh, you know, and not so much these days because we just play at the restaurant and don't really do anything else, hardly. Um, but when we were playing out on gigs and things, that was the request. In fact, um, I had one DJ from, I don't know, East Central Illinois. Uh, he called me up one night. I was at home and just, it was in the evening and he just called me and he says, Hey, I just wanted to let you know something. I said, what's that? And he says, I just thought I'd let you know that for the last, I forget how many weeks or months he said, I think it was like two months. He said, for the last two months, your grandpa's old fiddle has been my most requested song, you know? And I said, well, great. That's wonderful to hear, you know, but it's a true story. I wrote it about my grandfather and his fiddle. My grandpa died August of 89, and uh, two months to the day after he passed away, I woke up and wrote this song. And uh, I found the words in the house. I didn't even really realize I had written it. I mean, I kind of had a dream that I wrote a song, but I wasn't really sure. <laughs> and apparently I did. Goes like this. An old better case. Weathered and worn, with the hinges all rusted, and the fabric all torn, but still cradled inside, was one old precious thing, it was Grandpa's old fiddle, oh how sweetly it rings. Grandpa's old fiddle played sweet melody. And he played it from his heart for my grandma and me. Wrinkled old hands, he held it with love. And I can still hear it playing up in heaven above. He was the most honest man that I ever have seen. And his time on this old earth was most precious to me. And he lived on the current river at the mouth of Blue Springs. And at night the hills echoed as the old fiddle would ring. Grandpa's old fiddle played sweet melody. And he played it from his heart for my grandma and me. Wrinkled old hands, he held it with love, and I can still hear it playing up in heaven above. I was just a boy at the time, 
But I remember one day when Grandpa and the old fiddle some old tunes he did play. Well, now Grandpa, he has left us for heaven above. But he left me that old fiddle and now I play it with love. Grandpa's old fiddle played sweet melody And he played it from his heart for my grandma and me Wrinkled old hands, he held it with love And I can still hear it playing up in heaven above The old fiddle's ringing up in heaven above I even clicked do not disturb on this. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe it. He must have, it might be an emergency. It's JR. Listen guys, I'm going to call it short. It, you know, because it does have the do not disturb on here. So it could be an emergency. I'm going to call him back. So thank you so much for being here today. I'm sorry to cut it short, but uh, we'll get back to you tomorrow. Yeah.